All right, folks. Looking at something uh, I got today. Been uh, uh, my favorite guy's uh, Georgia gun store up in uh, Gainesville. I stop in there every couple weeks, and I'm like, "Did you get one of them yet?" They're like, "No." Did you get one yet? No. Um, and it's one I've really wanted. Um, so I got the email alert today that said, hey, this is in stock. So I emailed Mike. I'm like, hold it. I'm on my way. So what is it that we are talking about? The 856 three-inch ultralight in stainless. Ooh, it's taped shut. Well, we got our new Lion Steel Maximo M390 and titanium goodness. And watch that review. Love it. All right, so now that that's open, what did we get? Well, we got a box, we got some stuff and some things. We got a lock that I will never use. Um, I don't know what the shit that is. I don't know, is that a spare? Oh, it's a spare front, front sight, interesting. I guess if you don't want the Ameriglow day and night sight, you could go with the uh, old one there, you know, the regular blade. So I guess they give you an alternate front sight. You just punch that pin out with a drift and give you a replacement sight. That's kind of cool. I got this, read manual before use. Yeah, okay, whoops. And it is unloaded and covered with oil. Let's get rid of that little thing right there and give this a quick little wipe down. So this is an unboxing and we'll do a little mini review of it. So let me wipe it down real quick. Never had it out of the box, never dry fired it, and obviously I've not wiped it down in any way. It comes with a good bit of oil. So this is the stainless steel barrel and cylinder, and it comes with the Hogue extra grip, which I like. Love the way that feels in the hand. Um, and it also has the lightweight aluminum frame. Now, how much weight could that make a difference? Let's get this stuff out of the way. Well, the regular one is like 25 ounces. This one is 17. It's a half a pound difference. So this is a three inch barreled version of the 856. Now, most people know Taurus is 85 model. That is the five shot, two inch stubby and 38 special plus P. The 856 came out, which was just big enough to be able to cram a sixth round in there while also making it not work with most of the holsters. So there is that, and we'll see if this fits another holster that I have. Uh, we'll find that out momentarily. In any case, if not, I'll have to get one probably for a three inch Ruger SP-101. Most of those holsters do seem to fit. So this is the larger three inch barreled version of the 85, or sorry, 856 Ultralight. These are all unloaded. I've already checked it. This one is a 942 and 22 caliber. Um, I like this a lot, but it just has the front sight that is basically molded in. You can't change it. Um, and it's certainly not a night sight. It's just a black bladed ram. This is a very no frills, six shot, 38 special plus P, but it is lightweight. I do carry that occasionally. I like revolvers. I really have come to appreciate revolvers. I like their simplicity. I like the accuracy. I like being able to shoot it in single, I'm sorry, double action, so I can, or single, that's single action, so I can take a nice precise shot. I also like that really nice high visibility sight in the daytime, and that is also a tritium night sight. So at night, now it's too bright in here, but at night, that is a glow in the dark sight. So I've got the benefits of both. A lot of times I've seen nights, uh, daytime sights. You know, you get the, the painted. I've got a Ruger also unloaded GP100 here. We'll do a size comparison in a moment. But you got your bright, high visibility front sight, which is great in the daytime when you're shooting. But then at night, nothing. And then I've had other guns that had night sights that worked well at night, but then they were less than optimal during the day. I like what they do where they give you a nice, bright, painted surface and then they inset the tritium in there. So you're not making the sacrifice of having it be good for one and not as good for the other. So I like that right off the bat. I like the fact that it came with the whole grip. Nice touch. Otherwise, they come with these short grips, which are a little bit more concealable, but they don't fit my hand as well. And I end up going and getting one of these anyway. So I love that that came with that. Another thing I'm noticing with the weight difference here. So this one is, I think, an eight shot. 
Yeah, that's an eight shot in 22 long rifle. Got it for cheap planking. I like that it has a re adjustable rear sight. But this little guy, even though this is a 22, this is over 24 ounces versus 17. This is almost half a pound heavier because it's a big old chunk of steel. Now, the beauty of that when you're shooting a 22 long rifle out of it is it's going to recoil that much. You're not even going to basically feel it. It's going to be a ridiculously light shooting. As opposed to this, which may weigh, even though it's a bigger gun and it's made in a heavier caliber, it is almost half a pound lighter. So very nice, very carryable. Now, it's not going to be a pocket gun because you've got the extended uh, handle uh, grip on here and you've got the one-inch longer barrel. But being able to go from the smaller size to this without really paying much of a weight difference. I think the difference in weight between the two is like an ounce or something. It's just that extra, maybe it's an ounce and a half. It's just that extra inch of barrel. Other than that, and getting the upgraded sights, not much difference. So very cool. Uh, let's do, again, triple quadruple safety check. Trigger pull in single action mode. Not a lot of creep. The only creep, the one behind the camera. A little bit of creep, but it's brand new. It'll smooth out. Uh, double action. Stiff. Stiff pull, but fairly smooth. Again, that'll break in uh, with time. So I've had good luck with Taurus. Now, some of their semi-auto pistols over the years, the old original Millenniums and stuff like that, you know, they could be hit or miss. Um, I've, I've owned a lot of Taurus revolvers over the years in all different calibers. I've got a big 44 mag in the closet. Um, I've just had really good luck with Taurus revolvers. They make a good revolver. I think these ones are now made here in Georgia. So these are US made, um, not in Brazil. Um, well, it says made in Brazil on one side and then says, so maybe it was made in Brazil, but I know their North American headquarters is now here down the road in uh, Bainbridge, Georgia. So I don't know. Maybe I guess one's still made in, maybe they didn't move the machining. Maybe it's only the newer semi-autos that are being made here in Georgia at this point. Not really sure. I'll look into that later and throw it in the comments if it matters to anybody. But uh, yeah, I like it. Um, I have had Taurus uh, in the past where the ultralight, was at least a closer color. Like that's a pretty pronounced difference in color. I don't mind it. It kind of draws attention to it where when I look at it, but it is a little mismatched in that regard. I'm not sure why they changed the color. Um, in the past, you could tell the texture was a little different and that was what kind of denoted. But here, I mean, it's very obvious that I have an ultralight in my hand versus a steel where it all matches. But uh, pointability is good. The grip is really good. Um, I imagine it's going to be great to shoot. We'll do a shooting video one of these days. I'll get back to the range. But just to compare it to, like, I've got a 4-inch Ruger GP100 in 357. Now, this thing weighs well, more than double. I want to say this is, like, upwards of 40 ounces versus 17. So this is a much heavier, but it's also, you know, 357, and it's steel and built like a tank. So this is a what I, I would consider this kind of a nightstand gun. And I would consider it concealed carry. I would say that it's not going to be as concealable as, uh, I guess it's downstairs on the coffee table, my 380, you know, um, or even like a, a, a SIG P365. And you may say, well, why not go for the more powerful 9mm that has, uh, you know, double the capacity? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just like revolvers. So I keep getting the rest of the packing oil and stuff off of it, get it the rest of the way cleaned up. But um, definitely feels good in the hand. I definitely like the weight. I love the fact that it comes with the night sights. And if you didn't want the night sights, you can throw on your other, your, your, front, your regular front serrated blade. Now the moment of truth, will this fit? Huh. It actually does. It actually fits pretty well. So it sticks out the end. Let's see if when you draw, does that front sight hook? No, you can't bend it enough to where that is going to be a problem. So, and this is canting forward. So if anything, you're tilting it this way when you draw it. But that's cool. So yeah, it sticks out the end a little bit. So that wouldn't be protected. I guess if you were like laying down on concrete or brushing up against concrete, you could scratch the end of the barrel there. I do tend to like having the barrel completely protected and nothing for this to snag on, but I've never had a problem with something snagging. But it does fit and click in rather nicely. This is the Phobos uh, Elite. Um, 
I think it's actually the one looking at the model number. I think I bought it for the Ruger SPO 101 because I heard that they fit. Um, I don't know if they sell one that has it any longer, but I, I would not carry it because of that, being that it's a holster that I already have. The fit's pretty good, locks in. It's not going anywhere, but it's not hard and you can't adjust the tension on that. So that's a cool gun. I'm definitely been wanting one for a while. Um, I just like Taurus revolvers, I, and I like revolvers in general. I've certainly got nice, you know, Berettas and Glocks and SIGs and, and you know, some other guns that are, you know, my, my Shadow Systems. I've got a couple of those uh, MR920 MR Combats. You know, so I definitely like nicer pistols. But I'm finding myself as I get older, I'm liking lever actions. I'm liking some of these guns. I'm liking the classics. Um, I also feel like at some point, if enough uh, liberals get in power where they start enacting more gun legislation, they're going to be going after the high-capacity mags. They're going to be going after ARs. They're going to be going after those things. And so as a sort of a preemptive strike against future you know, gun restrictions and so-called common-sense gun control, the last things that are going to be on the table of getting the axe are going to be things like revolvers, pump-action shotguns, bolt-action rifles, lever guns, things like that. Not that I ever want to see my other toys go away, and I don't know that they will in my lifetime, and I will certainly try to ensure through my vote and activism that they don't. But at the same time, it's like, if if the worst scenario happened, and we lost the gun control debate, and anything over 10 rounds, and anything semi you know, all the crap that the Democrats say was common sense, which is anything but. But if they got their way, they waved a magic wand, and they got their way, could I defend myself and my family and, and protect myself and hunt and do things with revolvers and lever actions and things like that? Well, hell yeah. I mean, the Wild West was won with lever actions and single action revolvers. So, you know, where you had to cock it each time and stuff like that. And that was a harsh environment, <laughs> fighting off Indians and wild animals and all kinds of shit like that. Um, you know, so yeah, would I prefer to have my high capacity, you know, a SIG, uh, my M17 with 22 round mags? Well, yeah, <laughs> of course I would prefer to have that. I prefer to have the AR and stuff. But at the end of the day, these I feel are more future proof. Not that I'm giving up on gun control and conceding defeat. I'm just saying, they're fun to shoot. They're certainly accurate and adequate firepower to do anything I need to do. If I want to go shoot a white tailed deer, um, you know, within a certain range, I have this. If I want to extend the range out a little bit and go for hogs, I got a 44 mag, you know. I've got a bunch of 38 specials and 22s for planking and practicing. I mean, that's the reason why I got the 22. Yeah, the recoil is going to be different, but I can go to the range and I can draw and practice with a two-inch stubby, both single and double action, with one of my carry guns without having to, you know, waste 380, you know, 38 caliber ammo. So that's my thinking here. I like this one a lot. I used to have a Defender, which had the G10 grip. It was really cool, but it was it was a boat anchor. It was really heavy for its size. And I said, man, if they ever make that three inch and they make it with the night sight and they do it in an ultralight, I'm on it. I'm on it like stink on a monkey. So, uh, or Oprah on a cupcake or whatever analogy you want to. Richard Simmons on a Cub Scout. I can go on for days with these. Anyway, that's a really, really cool little revolver so that's going to make it into my rotation i need to get that to the range maybe go out to big kev's place uh one of these days and do a uh, revolver and lever action super gun day fun day sunday uh at his property up in dahlonega and uh maybe i'll bring the camera and we'll do a little range review of it shoot some 38 specials some target loads shoot some uh three 38 special plus p's out of it see what the recoil's like I think that with the three inch barrel, you'll increase your velocity. So if you're getting rounds that are made for, you know, cause they now have faster burning powders and things. They have guns uh, actually uh, target or, um, man, I'm just all over the place today. They've got ammo that is defensive rounds that are optimized, the powder, the burn rate, all that stuff to create the right pressure so that you get the speed you need to get for proper expansion and things, but you don't have to have the four inch barrel. It's made to do it out of a two inch barrel. I would tend to think those being shot out of a three inch barrel are gonna be fairly hot. You pick up a little bit of velocity and you'll have a 38 plus P and a little bit more uh, equivalent there. So that's pretty cool. Trigger pull's not bad. 
easy to clean. That's what I like about revolvers. I'm not taking it apart. I'm not dicking around with magazines. You just take, open it up, wipe it down, run a bore brush through it, and you're done, right? Um, you can come in here and see very quickly if it's loaded. You can look from the side and see if it's loaded. You're not messing around with the safety. You can draw it and put your rounds on target, or you could take your time with a single action and get that more precision shot. And with a good sighting system and a three inch barrel, you got a pretty good chance of hitting what you're aiming at within reason. So anyway, that's what we've got. That is the new Ultralight 856 three inch night sight edition with the Hogue grip. Let me know your thoughts.